We were so wrong. I think that was my favorite part. I think so too. Why was that fun? Go back in time and relive yeah. the last year. I think our biggest mistake actually. The big question. Probably the number one question we get is how much did the boat cost? <laughs> my drum roll. <laughs> A huge thank you to Squarespace for their continued sponsorship of our channel. We are Brett and Jade Evans. We bought a wrecked sailboat at auction, then dedicated the last year to bringing her back to life. Now it's time to transform her into our off-grid floating home. Subscribe and join us as we embark on our greatest expedition yet. For starters, we want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. We are so grateful for Squarespace and their sponsorship. They help make our channel possible and they really make sharing our story online easier through their website design platform where we're able to post our website and write out blog posts and then also through their sponsorship, consistently helping us to make these videos and make this all possible. Their customizable templates and responsive interface mean that you can spend more time doing what you love instead of struggling with the back end of business building. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash expedition Evans to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It has been four, almost five months. Oh my goodness. Since we hauled the boat out in the snow. It's gotten windier. It's gotten windier and the snow started to come down a lot to wait out the rest of the winter season. We're done working now, and we are finally able to go work on the boat. We're currently on the West Coast, and our boat is on the East Coast. Road trip. <laughs> There's a bunch of questions that everybody's been asking. We are finally gonna take the opportunity to answer them. What was your favorite part of the rebuild, Brett? So as weird as it sounds, my favorite part was probably just like the multiple <laughs> nights of minimal sleep while we were fiberglassing. Just like that fast paced, we have 48 <laughs> hours to lay all the fiberglass go. Okay, I think I was gonna say the same thing. It wasn't the first night we were fiberglassing, but it was the first night we were fiberglassing with the really big sheets. Yes. We couldn't stop, so we just had to keep going, and we were so sticky, and my knees got stuck to the ground, yep. and like And everything. we were miserable. I got overheated, I took off the suit, and I'm just in regular clothes. I buttoned them up wrong. Um, that about sums up how the night's going, but... <laughs> <laughs> we thought we knew how hard the project was gonna be, what it required. We were so wrong. I think that was my favorite part. I think so too. Why was that fun? We enjoy pain. Apparently. <laughs> Life is a winding road. This is a question we get a lot, and it is what are the collars around our dog's necks? This is Dingo. This is his dog trip pathfinder, and they are GPS collars. We have had this one on Dingo for five years, about as long as we've had him, because when we first got him, he ran away all the time. I think that I'm permanently scarred. Yep. With worry, it tracks how far they've run. So when we do hikes and stuff, it'll tell us exactly how many miles they've run. This antenna is how we're able to track it for nine miles. So this one has all the features. There's also a GPS only one that they have now, so we can link both of them. The next question is whether or not we would do it again. I would. If it was all the same. All, all everything the same? Just go back in time and relive yeah. the last year. Absolutely. Yeah? I would do things, I would do some things different, but I definitely do it again. Like, even if I couldn't do things differently, I'd still do it again. That's our boat. Babe, it's, it's really big. <laughs> this is like... By the end of today, we want to have all grinding, sanding done. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Camp is all packed up, tents put away. Jade is grabbing us breakfast. Isn't this cool? We got this from Bouge RV, but then actually, I think it's Bougie RV. We're having a good laugh about it. How do you guys pronounce this? Is this Bougie RV or Bouge RV? So the plan is it's 12 volt or 110 volt. We use it in the car because it plugs into a cigarette outlet and then. We're actually thinking we might wire it into the boat to be our fish freezer. Do you want bananas and raisins or do you want strawberries and... I want strawberries. 
Okay, I want whichever one you got me. <laughs> Thanks. Ooh, these are... Are they frozen? Do we have it? They're really cold. <laughs> They're not frozen. Okay. The next question is if we would recommend... Ugh, I wouldn't recommend dropping your pillow in the dirt. If we would recommend it to anybody else. Yeah. Yes, but I think, I think there were a lot of things that were pretty unique to our situation that made it really feasible. I mean, it wasn't just luck. We worked really hard. Oh, no, yeah. Happen. Maybe the answer is if you want to. Yeah. We really wanted to. And so we made it work. That's fair. I like that. Right? Are we keeping the YouTube channel when we're all done with the projects? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. We love it. I think we'll be here for a long time. Yep. Can't get rid of us yet. Biggest mistakes during the project? <laughs> the time I cut through the hole. Twice. I can't believe I just did what I just did. I think our biggest mistake actually was our failure to tent well enough. We tented it, we put up plastic, we taped it up, but we didn't do a good enough job. And so it ended up being dangerous and like suffocating. And so I think had we taped better, contained it better, Everything would have been better. I think the biggest, next... biggest win. Oh, I was going to talk about mistakes still. So. For me, it was a personal win painting the bottom. That was intense and hard. That was a big win for me. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> I'm glad it's done. I think the next biggest win definitely would be how well we measured and cut the fiberglass. She has to use her outstanding visual acuity. Oh, that was all you. To use you crushed that. The best. Like, that was just so satisfying. Next question is Is this our first YouTube channel? Because our editing is on point. When I say our, we mean Jade. Thank you. It is our first YouTube channel, but we kind did of post a few videos way back when we lived in Hawaii in the bus. I posted a handful of videos and then quickly realized that my editing was not on point and that we were terrible vloggers. We realized that there was a lot to do as far as learning how to talk on camera, learning how to film, everything. Sound check, testing, testing. Testing. Since we wanted to do YouTube, we decided to pause publishing videos publicly and we learned privately how to make YouTube videos. What are you doing, Brett? I'm on my honeymoon. Oh yeah? Yep. We're going out for the day. Talk to a camera. Are we happy we did the project? I'm super I'm happy thrilled. we did the project. Yeah, that's not even a question for me. All around, the project was a good choice. Oh, totally. Yeah, I'm glad we did I, I think it was great. Next question is, did we consider any other damaged boats before we picked and bought this one? Kind of. <laughs> I've been looking at damaged boats for- Whoa, it's echoing. Echo. Okay, just kidding. Let's vlog this one somewhere else. But I looked at a lot of Irma boats, but they were all really, really broken. <laughs> and we're gonna take way more work. I think we were really late to the ball game. But we did learn a bunch during that process about what kind of projects we were willing to take on. Yeah, so we learned, we learned, okay, here's the project, here's how long we think it might take, here's the materials and how much they might cost. And so we did a lot of that research. So that when this one came up, it, I very quickly went, this looks like a really good deal. When I looked at it, I said, yes. Next question is a pretty common one. And it is, why didn't we just go south and why didn't we just take the ICW? Our boat's too big for the ICW. We Barely. <laughs> maybe could have done it if we were willing to scrape bottom and scrape our antennas a few times. But basically, our mast is too tall for the bridges and our keel is too deep for the shallow areas. Our boat's just too big. Which means to go south, we would have had to just be in the ocean for most of the time. Originally, the boat wasn't structurally sound enough to do that. After the repairs, we definitely could have done that. Uh, the issue is that we couldn't make proper plans to leave our mast behind because every single week, we thought that the mast was getting stepped to the next week. It was kind of one of those, like, it's gonna happen in a few days, but then a few days later, it's like, oh no, it's gonna happen in a few more days. We've got our mast coming in. Rigging company's gonna come out. They're gonna look the mast over and then we'll launch the boat and we'll step the mast. I just want the mast up because I want to go south and we work so hard and it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. What do you think? It's crazy. We always thought we were about to step the mast. One other option that we could have done 
if we had known our mast wasn't going to get stepped for so long is we could have strapped the mast to the boat like just laid it on top and then motored south but we couldn't do that we asked and the yard was not capable of lifting the mast or building the structure they weren't yeah. capable or willing they weren't and so it just wasn't an option for us unfortunately so basically all the problems it was a big we, thing <laughs> all the problems we ran into were because our mast at our boat is a little bit too big for the yard that it was at basically uh yeah basically yeah yeah Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I What is your fave characteristic about each other? That's a fun one. I think you're like blind optimism. Against all odds, optimistic. Even when all of the evidence and facts like <laughs> say otherwise. <laughs> oh, what's that? Did that get you? Oh, uh -oh you're girl. free. I was optimistic we could get her foot unstuck. <laughs> you're amazing. How about me? I think my favorite quality about you is that no matter what happens, you're level-headed. It could be scary, it could be intense, I could be emotional, whatever it is, and you're just like, steady. I need Emotionless? That. I need <laughs> that in my life. No, no just, I know. I'm just you just like have it. If you're you're in control. It's a good balance to my out of control. It is. Always. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this one's a fun question. What are your questions for us? Like, what are our questions for you guys? Brett, what do you think? What I want to know is how many of you sail. I just thought of a question, you guys. That nobody asked this specific time, but will be asked and has been asked in the past, and that is not really a question, but more of the statement that the auction company totally played us and that we were just betting against ourselves. That's something that a lot of people have said because it was just over the phone. But I can assure you that that is not the case because we've actually been reached out to and become friends with a lot of the other bidders who got right up to the end with us. So we know it was legit, so you don't have to worry about that. Is this the coup de gras? Is that the right word? I don't speak German. Next question is a big one that I know a lot of people want to know, and that is how much did we pay for the boat? I think a big one is an understatement. This is like the big question. We get this question This every is probably, day. probably the number one question we get, is how much did the boat cost? With the follow-up question of was it financially worth it to do this boat and project? Yes. My drum roll. <laughs> So the the boat we wanted at auction, our winning bid was Hey Mike. Hey Brett, good news, you got the boat at ninety two. No way. Yeah. The fees and everything it comes to ninety seven six forty. So then after fees and all the brokerage and everything, it basically worked out to be a hundred thousand dollars. Which was our top that was our top dollar. We that was our Maybe <laughs> maybe a little above. The next big question then is was it worth it? financially. And so again, the answer to that is how much is it worth? Our valuation report came back after the survey for $220,000. So if we were to go out and sell our boat today, theoretically, that's how much money we should be able to sell it for, give or take. So with it being worth 220 and it cost us 100, was it worth $120,000 of labor and supplies? We think so. What's your favorite color? Have you ever licked the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? 